Good morning. I greet you this morning in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Welcome to the Leeward Islands District Devotional for today. My name is Marva Thompson, and I'm a local preacher of the Anguilla Circuit. I would like to wish for all of us a blessed and peaceful day, and I trust as we worship and praise our God, we'll all be truly blessed. Let us listen and join in this song, Jesus, You're All I Need as we worship God. Let us pray. Father God, we come into your presence this morning, praising you for your goodness and greatness. We acknowledge that you are God and there is none like you. We recognize, Lord, that you are faithful and generous God, one who keeps your promises and one who sent your son Jesus to come and live among us as your example. And then he died on a cruel cross so that we can be redeemed from our sins. What an awesome and faithful God you are. This morning we give you all that is due to you and we praise you and worship you because you are deserving of our worship. You are all that we need. You are, you are all everything. Bless us and bless this act of worship in Jesus' name. scripture reading this morning comes to us from Romans chapter 5, reading from verses 1 to 5. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, 
and character produces hope and hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. This is the word of the Lord. Now, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, triune God, illuminate your word. Last Sunday, we celebrated the festival of the Holy Trinity. Trinity is a very difficult concept to understand. In fact, it is a mystery. And we as Methodists accept by faith the doctrine of the Holy Trinity. Trinity refers to a three-person God working in unity. We believe that there is one God who exists as three distinct persons. Today, I wish for us to take a brief look at each person of the Godhead, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. As we look at this, we will see that we need nothing or no one else because God has all that we need. In his book, Searching Issues, Nicky Gumbel, a minister on the staff of the Holy Trinity Anglican Church, Brompton, London, tells of a woman known to him, an occupational therapist. She was trained in psychology in a humanist secular setting before she became a Christian. She had been taught that all, we all need three things. We need a point of reference. We need to know who we are, where we come from, and where we are going. Secondly, we need a role model. And thirdly, we need a facilitator. When this woman became a Christian, she realized that God is our point of reference. God the Father is our creator. Genesis 1, 1 says, In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. We continue to read in Genesis of how God created the day, night, the waters, the trees, the animals, and finally man and woman. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, God says, Let us make man in our image. Some writers believe that when God refers to us, he is referring to the Trinity because scripture supports the presence of the Holy Spirit, Job 33.4 and Psalm 104.30, and the presence of the Son of God, Colossians 1 verse 16, at the creation. When he said that we were created in his image, this means that our reason, creativity, speech, self-determination are, are characteristics of God. We are not physically like God because God does not have a physical body. We will never be exactly like God, but we have the ability to reflect who God is in our love, patience, forgiveness, kindness, and faithfulness. This provides us with a solid base for self-worth. Our worth is not based on possessions, but on being made in God's image. When God was finished with his creation in Genesis chapter 1, verse 31, he was pleased and he said, it was good. Secondly, she realized that Jesus is our role model. God desire from us obedience, love and worship. That is why he created us. But we failed God. He provided Adam and Eve with a beautiful home, a perfect home, and all he asked of them was not to eat of the fruit of one tree in the garden. They disobeyed and the course of man's life changed forever. Despite this, God decided to give us another opportunity to get right with him, to live in harmony with him. Throughout history, God has extended an arm of forgiveness towards us, but we continue to fail him. He realized that we were too far gone, so he decided to come in the person of his son, Jesus Christ. He needed to show us how to live the life he hoped for us. 
The prophet Isaiah in Isaiah chapter 7 verse 4 says, The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son and will call his name Emmanuel. Emmanuel means God with us. Jesus was God incarnate. He came as a child and lived among us. God the Son was God's answer to saving a lost nation. During the last three years of his life, Jesus laid out for us how to live, how to serve, how to forgive, and finally how to die for those we love, even those who do not love us. Greater love hath no one than this, than to lay down one's life for one's friends. John 15, 13. Jesus was our example. More than that, he is our savior. If we believe that Jesus came and died to save us, then his dying would not be in vain. Thirdly, she realized that the Holy Spirit is our facilitator. As Jesus prepared his disciples for his departure, they were not comfortable. They had been with him daily for the last three years. What were they to do? More than that, they were afraid of the authorities who they knew hated Jesus. Jesus assured them that he would not leave them orphaned. It is always hard to say goodbye to someone you love dearly. In John chapter 14 verses 15 to 31 and John 16, 5 to 15, Jesus promises the Holy Spirit who will come after his departure. I call him the facilitator. Jesus says in John 16, 13b, he will guide you into all truth. The Holy Spirit is the third person of the Trinity. Two Sundays ago, we celebrated Pentecost, a time when we remember the birth of the Christian church. Pentecost was that time when the promise made by Jesus to his disciples came to fruition. God came again to indwell among us. This time he would stay forever. The Holy Spirit has many names. The Advocate, the Helper, the Comforter, the Spirit of Truth. These names all give us an idea of his function and ability. The Holy Spirit, therefore, is to help us to understand the Word of God, to trust in Jesus, and to be a witness for him. Indeed, that is what he did on the day of Pentecost, and that is what he continues to do today. He transforms timid, stuttering human beings into powerful witnesses for Christ, to the glory of God the Father. The entire concept of the Trinity is a mystery. Indeed, God and the Holy Spirit is a mystery. But through Jesus Christ, by faith, we have been justified, that is, made right with God the Father, which has enabled us to receive that grace, the undeserving love of God, which has been poured out to all of us, in which we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Paul, in Romans chapter 5, verse 3, tells us that we glory in tribulation, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance, and perseverance character, and character hope. He goes on further to say, the hope does not disappoint. Through Christ's death and our faith in him, we are able to have hope for a better future. This hope is a firm one because of the love we experience as believers through the gift of the Holy Spirit. She saw that Trinity meets the deepest psychological needs of every human being. Let us ask God to send us his Holy Spirit to come and dwell with those of us who do not know him as Lord and Savior as we surrender to him and to continue to dwell with those of us who know him. Oh, come and dwell in me, spirit of power within, and bring the glorious liberty from sorrow, fear, and sin. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
Let us pray. Lord, we thank you this morning for your word. We thank you for the presence of your Holy Spirit who is with us and who is ministering to us. Lord, as we reflect on your message, let us continue to pray for all, especially those who do not know you, that they may come to know you. Help us to step out in faith, knowing that your biddings are your enablings. You are all we need. You are complete. Amen. We thank you for listening today and invite you to join us tomorrow for our devotional. Our closing song continues, Jesus, you're all I need. As we sing and listen to the words of this song, may we be encouraged and may God continue to bless us and make his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard our hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen.